What's up everybody, welcome back to another video and this video is going to be interesting because we're going to build a full stack application using Next.js and back in on fast API. The best part is that I'm going to use Versal's V0 and Mistral's Codestral, it's Codestral. How hard it is, Mistral, Codestral. Thank you, Dipolitics9520, I owe you. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. So I'm in my Visual Studio code and what we're going to build is a full stack application, which is more like an e-commerce landing page where you see all the products. So we'll be making the front end in Next.js and the back end would be in FastAPI. So here within my code, let me zoom it up for you guys. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add code stroll which I already have installed before. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I would recommend that you do. I've talked about code stroll, its attributes, what sets it apart from, you know, the competition uh, in quite detail. So you can go check out the very first video. I'm going to hook it up into the cards above. And then there's also another video in which we talk about how you can sort of integrate code stroll. Uh, within your VS code. So here's a link for that video uh, within the info cards. Uh, go check it out and you can continue with this video. Uh, all right, so I have everything in place. I also have uh, Versal V0 ready to go. So, but I'm gonna build the backend first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build a fast API through CodeStrawl and I'm gonna ask it to build all the routes and the data that we're going to return from those routes. So yeah, let's go ahead with it. So I'm going to hit command I. All right, I'm going to ask it to hit enter and there we go. So let's see, we have fast API, Atlantic base model, and then we have fast API initializer. We have a uh, type for product over here, which is cool. Then we have product lists and perfect. And we have a route for our products. And the response model is, of course, in form of a list. Let's go and check if this works. So, all right, I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go here within my command line and I'm going to type in. And there we go. That was it. That was it, really, that was it. So let's see if everything is in place. We have a, okay, so the landing page doesn't have, we need a slash route, which we can build in a minute. But if you wanna check our existing API, it's right here. This is a product API. Let me zoom it up for you guys. Perfect, so let me try it out. Execute, and there we go. We get these products. All right, so I'm gonna use all of this. I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna hit Command L. And I'm gonna say, can you add more products? All right, so it has given us something. Sure, I can help you with that. Here's how you can add more products to your list but we don't need these. Uh, so what it has done, it has given me a solution which sort of initializes this, something that we already have. And then it goes ahead and appends more product within the same array, which we don't really need. What we can do is we can just, uh, I mean, just copy these and just paste it. So Command C, Command V, and there we go. This looks nice. Product 96. And this is 6 as well. And this is maybe, let's say 25. Yep, this will do. Okay, let's just ignore. Uh, what I can do, select all, Command L. We have our code in place. Can you add a route, root route, actually? root route, which is, okay. 
So there we go. That's our root route. Command C, Command V, and save. So I think this should be reflected over here. And let's go here. Oh, not here. So it's localhost three, localhost eight thousand. So localhost eight thousand, and yep, there's now since we have the root route, so it says, let me zoom it up. Welcome to product API, which happens to be this route over here, and which we just added. So this is pretty cool. And once we jump into our doc file, let's refresh it and uh, okay, try it out, execute. And there we go. We have all the products, six products that we need. Perfect. So our backend code is ready. Let's head towards building the front end part. All right, people. So I'm in my separate folder for CodeStraw front end code, and I'm just going to go ahead to continue dot continue dot dev and start another chat, which happens to be how can I build a no actual let's say help me build a dummy Next.js project. All right, so we have node installed and we have create next tab installed. I've already done that before. So, and this is what we're going to do. Create next tab dummy project. All right, let's do it. Command C. Okay. Sure. I need transcript. I need ESLint. I need Tailwind CSS because most of the code generated by Wurzel would have Tailwind CSS. And yes, I would like to put it in the source directory. App router, sure, why not? Would you like to customize the default? Nope. Okay, it's going to take a while. All right, so we're good to go. Let's type in npm run dev. And we run into a few errors. Let's see what they are. Okay, let's see the code first. We have seen the code. Oh, I need to get into the folder. All right, let's clear things up. And then we can type in npm run dev. And there we go. That's our Next.js dummy application. Perfect. Okay, now it's time for magic. All right, so we need an e-commerce landing page, right? So where we can show all these products. So I'm going to say an e-commerce landing page with products. And I'm going to choose quality because quality matters. Quality or quantity, actually. All right, let's see. Interesting. All right, cool. This would do. Let's wait for it to complete. So we have a decent looking landing page. Here we have, I think, a different set of landing page. Oh, it's too fancy. I think this, this would do. I'm just going to go ahead, grab the code. Uh, go to my terminal. Now back to our component. Uh, what do I want to name the component? I just want to say mm, landing page. Not feeling creative today. So now it's going to add all the dependencies. Let's go ahead and check it out. So within components, Here's our landing page and here's the prerequisites, which are just the button. All right, nice. Let's hook it up to uh, the main page and let's see if it works. So we can get rid of all this code. So this code here is basically uh, the code over here. 
so we don't need it so we can just say whoa what's that okay let's just check if everything is working without the code we can say hello world and uh we need to go ahead and run npm run dev all right this is hello world that's worked fine perfect let's go ahead and put in our let's just put in our component here we don't need to import it for now i was I was gonna go through the route where we import it first, but Next.js would handle everything for us. All right, hit save. That's our component. We don't need the image import. Save. All's good. Seems to be good. And there we have it. All right. So we, what we need to do, we need to call the call our server and sort of uh, add our products over here, which happens to be uh, this section over here. So these are our product section. And since you can see, this is all Tailwind CSS. The structure is fine, but it's good for static implementation, but we would have to move around a few things. For example, uh, this particular section here, all, all we need is uh, this thing here. So we just need uh, like the one iteration, one block for for the products. For example, we have all of these in pure HTML uh, within our code. So let's just use this one to fill in all the products so instead of having all of these. So that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to minimize the very first one and I'm going to get rid of all the other product HTML. All right. All right. So select and delete. Perfect. Now I should have only one. Perfect. So now what I need to do, I need to hook up a uh, hook up a code which sort of fetches all the products from the uh, back end. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and ask CodeStrel to help us with that. So let me go here and expand this a bit. All right. How can I fetch data from a server endpoint get route. All right, so I'm not using Python, I'm using JavaScript. So let's go ahead and use fetch. Okay. Apply it to the current file. So all right, so this is what I did here. So I just put, applied the code to my current file and it added everything by itself. So everything like uh, the use effect hook, uh, the fetch part, the response part, the converting it to, I didn't actually did anything uh, by myself. So kind of cool. So. All right, so we need to close this off and we are good to go. Let's see if what do we have here. So obviously we don't have anything yet because this particular API doesn't exist. So what we need to do, we need to replace it with HTTP localhost 3000. And since our uh, it's basically this. Let's just copy it and replace it over here. Perfect. So let's see. I know we're going to run into course error, but let's see if that is it. All right, let's just select this. Right, so we have something. 
So let's put it in our code. Whoa, bro. No, that's not what I needed. I just needed this one. So I'm going to copy it. Control Z. And I'm just going to place it over here. So. OK, status. Perfect. This seems nice. Thank you, code stroll. And let's go ahead and run it. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, this is exactly what I predicted. We have a few course issues. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up a new window. I'm going to go to code stroll test. And where's my now? Thank you. Okay, let me zoom it up for you guys. There we go. So let's grab everything. Control L. Uh, I grab it like that. Okay, just like that. Okay, so Control L. Add course middleware. All right, so there we go. And we have our middleware. Let's go ahead and replace it. So thank you, accept all. Okay, let's see if everything is working fine. Seems to be working fine. All right, let's go ahead and refresh. I think we have our products now. Let's go ahead and see. And there we go. So we have product one, product two, six products, and boom. So yeah, this is this is pretty nice. I mean, um, the best part is that it's good to have some sort of an assistant by your side. It really paces up your development speed. So using code stroll and a uh, versatile v0 definitely helped me build this use case which could have taken longer. I'm pretty sure the front part could have taken, you know, almost like two hours easily for me to put this all together to make sure, you know, whenever you're, uh, you know, working with front ends, you always run into styling. Okay, this is not better. Okay, this padding is not better. Maybe I need more margin, stuff like that. But it's good that Versal V0 really gives you that stepping stone. And having code stroll at your side and building stuff, you know, with that speed and with that latency, it's amazing. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I believe these tools didn't actually replace me, obviously. Cultural made a few errors uh, in the midway, but it's good to have like a quick source of, you know, knowledge. You know, if you if you run into some problem, if you run into some error, then you can just, you know, find out the fix easily. And obviously the integration of code stroll within VS Code and the whole experience of it where you can just ask stuff and just pull in stuff. That's pretty nice. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I found the whole experience pretty amazing. And uh, this was a cool exercise, by the way, yes, for me, at least uh, it's 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 a bit different, not used to it. I'm pretty sure you guys are not used to it or you're sort of adapting yourself to sort of use these LMs out there and use these integrations. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you got any comment, please drop it down within the comment section. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.